when they said that there were a lot of ways to go to heaven, different roads, they called it the mystical traveler consciousness, that you would uh, be able to connect to the mystical traveler who was the one that brought the soul through the light realm into the sound realm and, and the ascended masters were there and helping you, lifting you into the great ocean of love and mercy and all this kind of stuff. I accepted it. My dad was a tough guy, great guy, godly guy, but a tough guy. And I think I started to see his way as being a little bit too narrow. I was in the back seat of the car and I leaned forward to dad and I said, you know, dad, I, I think you're just a little close-minded about these kind of things. He said, uh, look, if it's not in the Bible, I don't believe it. And I remember just sitting in the back seat, shaking my head, thinking, God love him, he just doesn't get it. I'm Tom Patton. I'm a pastor here at Grace Church with Assimilation. I pastor a group called Cornerstone. I grew up thinking I was saved. I grew up actually at five years old thinking God called me into the ministry. And yet, as my life unfolded, I remember going into uh, junior high and high school and, and starting to be more influenced by uh, drama. Went to college and just got involved in fraternity life and eventually got into a movie and came to California. That was uh, 1982. I took a class that a friend of mine had offered to help me with my acting, and it ended up being a way into learning about this New Age church. And I was so impressed and seduced by this that I ended up being with this for five years. I would read every night the material. I would meditate two hours a day. I would literally sit in my chair and try to have like out-of-body experiences. And Jesus was there. He was one of the Ascended Masters. But so was Confucius, and so are the Hindu gods. When you're in the acting realm, you try to be open to things. You want to be open to different philosophies and, and different ways that people think because you're trying to empathize with them. The blessing was I started doing poorly in my acting career. <laughs> I started getting all you know sad and depressed, thinking my religion wasn't helping me. I went to a, uh, an astrologer and had my chart done. I paid her you know a lot of money considering I didn't have any. I started trying to clean out my life, and I started by cleaning out my closet. And I found this um, uniform that I had borrowed from a buddy of mine who I used to work with in a restaurant. I had it for six years. I found this guy and told him, I said, hey, his name's Dean. I've got your army uniform, and I feel bad I need to give it back to you. He goes, hey, that's great. Why don't we meet at the restaurant where we used to work, and we'll just hang out. And since I had seen him in six years, he had gotten saved, came to the Lord. Now all he wanted to talk about was Christ. I said, look, you know, you're a nice guy, but I don't need to see you again. And he said, well, why don't you just one more time come and get to meet my wife. He'd gotten married. And so went to their house, had dinner, talked about the Lord some more. And he said to me, he goes, you know, Tom, I, I think you're seeking, you're struggling, but you're not saved. And, you know, that was it. I thought, how dare him, the audacity of that guy to say that to me. You know, what brashness and who does he think he is? And uh, I didn't want to talk to him. I told him, I said, you know, do not communicate with me again. Two weeks later, in the mail, I get this package. And uh, it's a book called The Gospel According to Jesus by John MacArthur. When I opened it up, it was from my friend Dean. And it said, uh, Tommy, he called me Tommy, Tommy. There are many roads that lead to destruction, only one to life. For some reason, I just decided to read that book. Chapter one, I was already convinced that I was on the wrong side of salvation. And I realized, oh my, I am I'm not saved. This is true. Jesus is God. What he demands is complete and utter turning away from everything that you once were. I knew Christ was God. I knew his salvation was the only way. I knew that I had to come. I just didn't want to come. I was so scared. I didn't want to give up my life. I didn't want to give up all of my habits, all of my sin. And I realized that those things that I loved, that I was trying to hold on to, even, even being an actor, even my profession, all of that would have to be surrendered. I basically held out as long as I could. I was reading the Bible every day, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't come, I wouldn't come. And then one night, I don't, it was in November, uh, I don't remember the day, and I got down on my knees, I just gave up. My heart broke in two, I repented, I asked him to forgive me on everything I could possibly think of. Just my whole life, I asked him to forgive me for my whole life. My affections changed, everything changed. But it was from that moment. It was from the moment that I finally came to the realization by God's grace, because I couldn't have seen it on my own, that my life of unbelief was a total rejection of everything that Christ wanted from me.